Hi you guys. So today I'm coming at you with a story time. I always watch like my favorite YouTubers videos and their channels and I wanted my channel to be a combination of everything that I like. Like what makes me be like oh yes girl and one of the things that makes me go yes girl is story time. And so I wanted to come at you guys with one of my story times because I feel like I have a bunch of crazy stuff that has happened to me in the past. Although my life as of late has been very drama free, my past has been crazy and most of it hasn't even been on my own account. It's been for me like having drama filled people around me. So today's story time that I'm coming at you guys with is the time that I fought my best friend over my first. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it, girl. So, <laughs> when I was in 10th grade, um, my mother and I, we were having a rough time um, getting along in the house. We just weren't seeing eye to eye. So, she and I, we got into a really bad one time and she sent me to live with my aunt. So, I lived with my aunt for a little while and while I was living with my aunt, my aunt had, you know, somewhat strict rules but we had a little bit more freedom there at the same time see at my mom's house we couldn't like really stay out late or anything like that and um depending on how she felt that day if she didn't feel like she wanted to let you outside then you weren't going to go outside and now that i'm older like i totally understand with the neighborhood that we were in and the things that people were doing in the neighborhood but at my aunt's house her neighborhood wasn't as bad so we had like rules, but we had a little bit more freedom with those rules. So if we went outside, we could stay out until like mm, seven or eight o'clock on a weeknight. And then on weekends, we had until 11 o'clock at night, which was really cool. So when I was in the sixth grade, we're going back back just a little bit. When I went to sixth grade, me and my mother, we moved into a house and we moved like it was like 15 minutes down the road from where I was going to elementary school at. The elementary school that I was at at first up until fifth grade, I had those friends all the way up until fifth grade. And when you move to a different district, it's like far away when your mother doesn't drive. And my mom didn't drive at the time. And so because of it, like I lost touch with my friends and I didn't really see them until we got like to high school again. And by then we were just kind of like we were still cool, but it wasn't like how it was before. So when I went to stay at my aunt's house, my aunt lived in the old district where my elementary school was. And so I reconnected with many of my friends. So when I reconnected with my friends, one of them that I reconnected with was one of my old friends. He was actually like my first boyfriend back in kindergarten and we went to the dance together and all that stuff. So yeah, <laughs> he was one of them and then the other one was his best friend and a few other guys that they hung out with, like two other, three other ones. And so we were all cool. So I had like a female friend or two, but really it was just me and these five guys that would hang out and I just loved them to death. Like we were cool. They went everywhere with me. I went everywhere with them. We They protected me. Like we always made sure each other was good. And so I was just in a good space at that time. So one of the guys I had become really, really close with, and mind you, this is 10th grade year, and um, he was just really sweet. That's what I remember about him and me falling for him. We were best friends. He was really sweet, and anytime like it was late at night and I was going to go home, I literally lived across the fence from him when I was at my aunt's house and he would literally like walk me home he would call me or text me and check on me and make sure I was good anytime I felt upset or anything like that he would call me and talk to me until I felt better and just made sure I was good so he was a really sweet guy um so I ended up having a crush on him and I just remember one day being like I was in the bathroom like fixing my hair and I was just like I have a crush on this guy and we're going to name him Joe. 
<laughs> because I don't think I know anybody named Joe. So we're going to call him Joe. So I ended up having, like, realizing I had a huge crush on Joe. So Joe and I, um, I guess Joe had the same mutual feelings because um, we were talking on the phone later that day and somehow, some way, it came up and I realized that Joe had the same exact feelings for me. And it was really cool. So, you know, I was like, oh, okay. And so... He was like the, I don't know, like I just, I had never had a crush like this before. I felt this kind of way about anybody. So um, we kept hanging out and stuff like that. And Joe ended up being my first um, sexual encounter. So he was my first and like we were just still cool. Like I don't think we ever had an official title like, you know, calling each other like boyfriend and girlfriend. It was never like that. It was just like like I just knew we never really said it because it was never really asked um our boys knew um everyone around us knew even my female friends knew my mother knew like it just was what it was and it was a good thing so fast forward and later on into the school year a girl we get this I, I'm on the dance team I've always been on the dance team like, as long as we've had one at the school, I've been on the dance team because I was a dancer and I've always been the captain. That's just my thing. So, um, we get these girls that move in and their two sisters, they move in from another state. And, um, one of them, they're both, I believe, I believe they're both cheerleaders, but they both also were on the dance team. So... This girl, she joined, I become best friends with the younger sister. And when I say best friends, I mean like she's coming over my house. She's spending the night um, when I can't have company over. I'm like sneaking her in my basement and hanging out with her. Like she's just like my friend, friend, like my best friend. Now, you guys, keep in mind, I'm going to put this out there. When I'm somebody's friends, like, my friends will tell you now. When I'm somebody's friend, I am your friend. Like, I won't sit around and let anybody talk about you. Like, I'm never going to talk about you to anybody. Like, you're my friend. I'm loyal, ride or die, and I expect you to be the exact same way for me. So, with that being said, um, me and this girl were really cool. And, you know, there were a lot of people that would talk about her and stuff like that. And for different reasons, because she was a bit of a free spirit. Free spirit. So, um, I would just, you know, I'd be like, you know, don't talk about my friend, whatever. And I always had her back and made sure she was good. Now, I had another best friend that was from another state as well. This best friend hated her. Didn't understand why I want to be around somebody who's a free spirit. You know, she's like, you're not like that. Why do you want to hang with her? Like, ill. So and I'm like, no, she's really cool, whatever. And so I found myself always defending her and, you know, just being a true friend. So this girl was my best friend or so I had thought. So, um, one day actually, so we all had lockers and I kid you not, you guys, this story, like the way this played out had to be fate. And I swear, like God was trying to show me that everybody ain't loyal. And I'm going to tell you the reason I say this, you guys, because uh, let me tell you, girl, we had, so our lockers were three in a row. It was mine. It was his. It was hers. What are the odds of that? So I was just like, you know, in the beginning of the year, like, oh my gosh. Or when she came, like, oh my gosh, you know, this is so exciting. We're all together, yada, yada, yada. And like, it just turned out to be such a nightmare. And I'm going to tell you why. So we were always all so cool. And she lived around, I ended up moving back to my mother's house because we were on better terms. So she lived around the corner from my mom. And like, it was really exciting for me because I could always see her whenever I wanted to. So when I was at my mom's, um, I, she would hang out with me and so would he. And um, it was at the time where I didn't realize like what I had because I was just happy to be with the person like I really really liked him and I didn't realize that like when you're a guy on the football team and you're tall and you're this and you're that like everyone wants you I didn't realize it was that way I just knew that that was my best friend and that I really liked him 
So anyway, one day we were in, like he would walk her home sometimes if, you know, like it got super late and they both had to leave. He would walk her home before he would get on the bus and go home because we were like 15 at the time. So like we were super young and, you know, a 15 year old female doesn't need to be outside by herself. And so um, there was one day in particular, I remember coming to school and we're all at our lockers and this guy, like, Joe is giving this girl, like, the cold shoulder, like, just, mm, like, she's, hi, hey, and he's just, mm, like, speaking to me, acting regular, smiling at me, like, we, we good, but me and her, nah, and, like, he was so cold, and I never seen him be so cold before, so I'm like, hmm. And you guys, I like what I thought was nothing like what it was was nowhere near what I thought. So I was just like, all right, cool, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, man, maybe I'll talk to him or whatever when we're in uh, class because we had a class together. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So, you know, I'm trying to figure out from him, you know, what's wrong, Joe? Why? Why do you have a problem with my friend now? And he's just like, mm, like. Basically, he didn't have any more respect for her. And I'm just like, okay, like, what happened? And you guys, I was so naive then. I didn't think that people, I thought that if you were a bad person, it was out in the open. Like, it wasn't a hidden thing. It was, your, if you're bad, you're just bad, and you don't give a fuck, and you let everybody know that you are, and it just is what it is. Not, you're a bad person, and you hide it from people, and you betray other people. No idea. Had no idea the world was like that then. Maybe I should have known at that age, but I didn't. I trusted a lot of people. And so one there was one day, you guys, she had like wrote me this letter. And I'm like, what in the heck is this? And like she gave me the letter. I don't remember if she knocked on my door or where we were, but I remember she gave me the letter. She went home. And I read the letter and at the bottom of it told me, she told me to give her a call. So you guys, this letter said, <laughs> this letter said that she had basically came on to my boyfriend at the time. Like, I can't remember whether she uh, tried to have sex with him or like she was just kissing and touching up on him, but it was... <laughs> It, it was along those lines. It was super, it was so inappropriate. So whatever it was. So I just remember reading it and she's just like, I'm so sorry. And basically he just didn't want to have anything to do with her because she was my friend. And he's like, that's my friend too. And even if I wasn't dating her, I mean, even, even outside of the fact that we're dating, she's my friend and I can't be friends with someone who would betray my friend. So I'm like, oh gosh. So... I'm like fuming you guys and I'm hurt because this is the first time I it happened to me and I'm like more than anything in shock. I'm like what like what the hell? So I'm like uh, so I'm at school the next day and I don't really say anything to her and thank God like I didn't have practice that day. I'm like what the hell like I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this like I wanted to be mad but then I felt guilty for being mad. It was just all these crazy things going through my head. So, the next day comes and um, I'm in class and there's this girl who's friends with the girl, like kind of cool with her. She's like her friend of me, okay? She didn't care for her much, but she kept her in her circle. I guess she was doing the keep your, friend, your friends close and your enemies closer type of thing. And she's just like telling me like, yo, you know, I heard you and such and such got a problem. We're going to call the girl, who, what are we going to name her? We got Joe, so we're going to name her Kelly. So she's like, you know, I hear you got beef with Kelly or Kelly got a problem with you. And Kelly was like talking that shit. When she see you, she going to beat your ass. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so you guys, I'm not that way anymore. But back then, I never messed with anybody. I was the sweetest person ever. But. If you threaten me, <laughs> don't do that. Don't threaten me. Because when you threaten me, you see, now I'm, 
<laughs> I'm going to come for you now, for real. Like, I'm going to show you who you threaten. That's how I was, and that's how I rocked. And so, I was like, oh, oh, okay. And I'm just looking at the girl, and I'm like, oh, she did? Okay. Like, showed no signs of anger. None. And I'm like, mm, okay. I'm, wow, that's crazy. Oh, I'm a bitch. Oh, okay. Wow. So, I'm like fuming by the time that bell rings, you guys. So, I go upstairs to my locker. And as I'm walking that way, she and I are like coming like this. And I'm like, you guys, I'm at this point, I'm like fuming. And I'm looking at her like, because I'm like, at this point, how dare you do something trifling to me and then talk shit about me? Like, I was the bad friend to you. And I've always been there for you. Like, never done anything to you. So when I saw her, I looked at her and she's just like, hi, like she never said anything. And so I looked at her in her eyes and I was like, you said that I was a bitch. And when you saw me, you was going to beat my ass. And she just looked at me like, like what? Like she was surprised anyone told me. So when she did that, I got really furious. And so the look on her face made me really angry, so angry that I just hit her. And so I just poof, right in her face. And she backed up and she looked at me like, what? What? And so, you guys, I was so mad that I, at that point, I was determined that she was going to fight me. Like, I wasn't going anywhere until she fought me. Like, you're not going to talk that shit and not fight me. So, she looked back at me and then I hit her twice. <clears throat> Again, and she backs all the way back. And her, a tear comes down like her eye and she's just looking at me in disbelief. And so she starts swinging back and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So we just going back and forth, just going at it. <clears throat> so an uh, administrator came, he tried to pull me, swung on him, didn't know who it was. I Guys, I didn't know who it was. It could have been one of her friends. It could have been her sister. I don't know. So I swung backwards, kept on going for it. You guys, I swung so hard on this girl that my arm dislocated. So my right arm dislocates. Never had it happen before. And I'm like, what is this feeling? And I'm still swinging with the left. I realized what had happened with my arm. I look down and I'm like, oh. <laughs> look, <laughs> if I don't come up with something real fast, this girl's going to beat my ass. Okay. Now, let me paint the picture, you guys. And I didn't grow my last two inches until I was out of high school. So back then I was like 5'3", maybe a little taller than 5'3". This girl was 5'10", 5'11". And she was like built, like she was a cheerleader. So, you know, they run bleachers, they lift weights. That's what they do all day. So I'm like, oh man, you know, if I don't, I'm gonna have to pull it together. Something's gotta give. So I look at the lockers and where the opening is, there's ridges on the side of the locker. And so I decided immediately that's where her face was gonna go. So I took her by her hair and was scraping her face up the locker and she had like skin pieces like hanging down and scratches and just all kinds of stuff. And I don't know how we got broken up, but she had scratches and skin pieces and what have you. And I don't know how we got broken up, but we got broken up. And when I got broken up, I turned around and I saw one of the administrators behind me and he was like holding himself because I swung on him and I'm like oh my gosh like I knew what I was doing when it came to her but I didn't mean to hit him so I'm like oh my gosh so then I look over and then one of her friends is some gay guy is like screaming at me like you know you will see me next yada 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 and I'm like with my bad arm behind my back like or excuse me my dislocated arm behind my back and I'm like what's up like what's up so he just, you know, runs off at the mouth. He's not doing anything. He's just like going off. And so I turn around and I see all the students lined up that came running out of the hallway to see this fight. Because y'all know how it is in high school. When it's a fight, everybody runs to see it. Because why? We're nosy. We're bored. We're in school. There's nothing else better to do but look at a fight. It's excitement. So they're all lined up to the left of me. And I look and I see the guy I'm dating. And he just looks at me like, damn. Quite honestly, I don't think he thought that I had it in me. And I think it's because I was so sweet. I had never been tried like that before. I knew that I was a fighter, 
by nature but I didn't know that put being put in that situation I would scrape somebody's face up the ridges of a locker so with that being said um they ended up calling an ambulance for me and they're like you know you gotta we gotta take you to the hospital because your shoulder's dislocated sweetheart and I hear her scream when she goes and looks in the overhead projector inside of the office and she screams like oh my gosh my like this scream I've never heard and I started hysterically laughing because you guys when I'm when I get mad like I'm there every things funny I don't care about anything so I'm like laughing at her I think it's hysterical so they're like you know we got to take you out of here so they come up with a stretcher and they're like you know you gotta lay on a stretcher and you guys I'm so prideful like even to this day I still have a teensy see little bit of pride left in me and but back then it was like at an all-time high and I'm like I'm not getting on nobody's stretcher so she could say that she whooped me so bad that they had to carry me out of here in a stretcher hell no so I'm like I walk out of there I walk with them onto the elevator and after I walk with them onto the elevator you know they took me to the hospital whatever and um they put my my arm ended up popping itself back in place by the time I got there my mom came and my mom brought me food my mom just looks at me and she's like like what what happened and I told her I was like look mom like this is what happened I'm like you know, Kelly did this, that, and the third with Joe and thought she was going to write me a letter. And, you know, I just couldn't let it go. And my mom was like, oh, my gosh. And my mom, she's, like, really understanding because she understood, like, you know, how something like that felt. And so she cut me a lot of slack and she was just like, well, you know, you're suspended. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go back and I'm like, I need to go get my books because there's no way I'm going to get behind on homework just because of this so I was like it, they said I'm suspended tomorrow and so on but not today so let me go back and get my stuff so I can you know be home so I went back to get my stuff and I'm going to my locker and apparently Joe has stayed after school and he sees me and I hadn't looked in the mirror up until like at this point I had a mirror in my locker but I hadn't looked in it so I came and then I saw him and he just looked at me and he's like dang rocky like <laughs> and so um he like put his hand on my forehead and it hurt so bad when he did it and I'm like what the hell is that and so I backed up and I felt and I felt I had a huge knot so I was like all right cool so um I went and saw in the mirror and I was like this heifer put a knot on my head and so I'm like complaining to him like no she didn't put a knot on my head like I went another round. I'm about to go to her house. And he's like, really? Like, you scraped the skin off this girl's face. She's walking around with Neosporin on her face. And you want to go fight her over a knot on your forehead? And I'm like, Ugh. So, I, I left it alone. So, I went to um, my house and whatnot. And um, I can't remember when we started talking again, she and I. But I know that there was a point where she and I talked for a second um, a few days later and she apologized for everything and told me that she was going to come to my house and to apologize because she knew she was wrong and I was just like like you know it was still hard to be mad at someone it's hard to be it's hard to forgive someone when they did something so shady to you like that and then like they want you they want to apologize to you and then y'all to be back where y'all were like no I can't do that with you baby girl like I just I can't so that happened and um after that um she ended up moving away her and her sister and um he and I ended up breaking up off some other type stuff but they ended up leaving and he and I were still together whatnot and um she you know would still message me from time to time and she has she hasn't as of recent but probably like two years ago um and you know I'm over it now it's like we're grown it's shit now but um you know it was just crazy to me 
how like someone like that was my first experience with my first you know what I mean and he was my boyfriend and then like my best friend and you guys our lockers were lined up three the hard way like this crazy so anywho I learned from that situation that you can't trust everybody and to be quite honest with you if you have a friend that's a free spirit like I don't I don't trust those type of friends around my guys I just don't and honestly I try not to keep friends like that anyway not that I judge people because I don't but I don't try to keep people like that around me because honestly if they don't have loyalty towards dudes then they're probably not going to have much loyalty towards you and they're not respecting their bodies either so they're, if they're not respecting their own damn self what makes you any different so anyway you guys that's the end of my story time if you like that story time and you want to hear more comment below like my video hit me up on facebook chat with me on twitter uh let me know how you liked it i have a couple more stories up my sleeve that are just crazy even crazier than that so if you guys want to hear more story times let me know and i'll see you guys next time bye